Okay, so this unit we're going to be talking about probability. The first problem, or the first thing that we're going to talk about is Venn diagrams. Um, so we can use Venn diagrams to help us illustrate uh, the probability of being in two different things or multiple things, or being in nothing at all. Um, so the first example that we're going to talk about is uh, Miss Franco's class. Miss Franco conducted a survey of her home room. She asked students what math course and what science course they were taking this semester. Low are the results. And so we've got a Venn diagram showing off algebra and chemistry. And it says analyze a Venn diagram and list five facts about Miss Franco's room. So just looking at this Venn diagram, first thing I'm going to say is that, so number one, first fact we know, there are 14 students in algebra two. So uh, 14 students in only, let me specify, only Algebra 2, okay? Since they're in this circle itself, it kind of right here, all of this stuff, that means they're only in Algebra 2. Um, another thing we know is that there are five students in only Chemistry. So five students in only chemistry, okay? Something else is that we know that there are four students in Algebra 2 and Chemistry. We see this intersection of the two circles, right, or two ovals. So that means that they're in both. So we can say there are four students in Algebra 2 and Chemistry. Another thing we know is that there are, uh, if you count them all up, uh, we know that there are 14, 4, and 5. That makes uh, 23, right? So we know that there are 23 students in either A2, excuse, in either A2, Algebra 2, or Chemistry. Okay, um, since this is inclusive, it will be um, four. And then the last thing we can say, the six, since they're not in either of the ovals, we can say that there are six students um, in neither class. Okay. Part two, it says, if a student is selected at random from Ms. Franco's homeroom, what is the probability that the student is taking Algebra 2 and Chemistry? And explain your reasoning. Well, we know that there are five, uh, four students taking both A2 and Chemistry. Okay? And then, so we know that uh, if we're creating a probability here, we're going to be looking at a ratio, okay, or a fraction. So there are four students in both, um, and there are... 29 students in total. If you counted all this up, there are 29 students in total. And so that means the probability um, of someone being in both would be 4 out of 29. Or if you divide that on the calculator, it would be 0 0.138 or 13.8%. Um, okay. Question three says, if a student is selected at random from Ms. Franco's homeroom, what is the probability that the student is not taking Algebra 2 or Chemistry? Explain your reasoning. So we need to look at the probability of students being in neither. So we already said that there's six students that are taking neither. So it would be six out of the 29 total, or 20.7%. Question four, it says, find the probability that Algebra 2 or Chemistry, okay? So we need to find uh, the probability that a student is taking Algebra 2 or Chemistry, okay? And so this right here is usually how we denote probability problems. It'll be P, which stands for probability, and then in parentheses is what we're trying to find. So the probability of a student taking Algebra 2 or Chemistry. Um, well, we know that there are... Uh, 23 students in total who are taking Algebra 2 or Chemistry. Remember, this was the 
um, union of the two circles or two ovals. So we have 23 students in total taking either or out of 29. And so we've got 79.3%. Uh, Question five says, what is the probability of students taking chemistry given that the student is not taking algebra two or in other words, if we wanted to write it uh, in more math terms, probability of chemistry given not taking algebra two. Okay, so we need to look at a couple things here. We need to look at students taking chemistry first. So students only taking chemistry is five. Okay, so only chem is five. Now for the students that are taking uh, it's saying not taking algebra two, okay? Um, we need to look at the students that are taking neither algebra two or chemistry, okay? Because we already counted the kids that are taking chemistry. If we're looking at kids that are not taking algebra two, all right, we need to focus on the neither. So we're gonna say neither chemistry or algebra two is six, okay? So in total, uh, there are 11 kids, if you combine these, 11 kids not in Algebra 2, okay? So if we're looking at the kids in Chemistry given that are not in Algebra 2, we would say there are five kids taking Chemistry given that they are not in Algebra 2. So 5 over 11 would be... 0.455 or 45.5%. All right, so this next one, it says, let me do this real quick. There we go. So it says students survey 758 spectators at a national championship tennis match. The survey results indicate the following. And so there are 421 male students or male players, 256 have a two-handed backhand swing, and 176 of the people with a two-handed backhand swing are female. Draw the Venn diagram and label the data. So we've got we've been given two things. We've been talking about male players and we've been talking about two-handed players. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a box here, okay? This is kind of going to be where all of our data goes, okay? And now I've got two circles inside, one representing males and the other representing two-handed, okay? So male and then two-handed. Okay. Now, they said that there are 421 of them are male, 256 have a two-handed back swing, backhand swing, and then 176 of the people with a two-handed backhand swing are female. So if we have, uh, if we count all of our values up, we would find that there are uh, 758 total. Okay. So... If we know that 421 are male, then we do 758 minus 421. That tells us that there are 337 female. Okay. Now, if we know that 176 of the people with a two-handed backhand swing are female, then that means if we have uh, 256 total people, have a backhand, two-handed backhand swing, and 176 are female, then 256 total minus the 176 female, that tells us that there are 80 men with two-handed backhand swing. Okay? So of these two, we've got male, we've got two-handed, and then we've got in the intersection here, this would be male two-handed backhand swing. And we just said that there are 80 men with a two-handed backhand swing, so there would be 80 here. So 
if we have 421 males total, 80 of them are right here, then that means the rest of them have to go here. So if we did 421 minus 80, we would get uh, 341. So 341 goes here. And then we know that there are 176 of the people with a two-handed backhand swing are female. Okay, so um, we can say that since we have 256 total players have a two-handed backhand swing, we know that 80 are male, so 80 of them are right here. So out of the 256, if we take away the 80 from right there, that means that 176 of them are just two-handed backhand swings. And since we know that 758 are total, if we add up these three values and take them away from 758, so 758 minus 341 minus 80 minus 176, then we get 161. So of all 100, 758 players, 168 of, excuse me, 161 of them are neither male nor two-handed. And then question six says, what is the probability that a person selected at random from the survey group is male? Okay, so, well, we know that there are 421 males in the group out of 758 total. So we can say 421 out of 758, that's going to give us a probability of 55.5%. And then it says, what is the probability that a person selected at random from the survey group is female? Well, we know that there are 176, or excuse me, 337 total females. So we can say the probability of a female is 337 out of 758, which equals 44.5%. Next up, what is the probability that a person selected randomly from the survey group has a two-handed backswing? So we know that 256 of the total players have a two-handed backswing. 256 of them have a two-handed backswing out of 758 total, which equals 33.8%. Number nine says, what is the probability that a person selected randomly from the group is male or has two-handed backswing, backhand swing? So we've got to look at two groups here, male or two-handed backhand swing. And or is the important part. Anytime you see or, um, you're looking at inclusive, the union of the two. So we need to look at all parts. So we've got 341 of them are male. We've got 176 of them are two-handed. And then we've got 80 that are male and two-handed. So or would be the uh, addition of all three of these parts, one, two, three. So probability of being male or has a two-handed backhand swing? Well, we've got 341 male, 80 that are both, and then 176 that are just two-handed backhand swing. Out of 758 total, so simplify that, we'd have 597 on top, 758 on bottom, which equals 78.8%. And the next part, what we're going to be talking about is tree diagrams. 